Happy Thursday, everybody. I am trying out the brand new mm -hmm, Beta 3, and I couldn't resist playing with it. Um, so I'm trying to record something with mm -hmm, Beta 3. So I thought I would show you how to use AWS Cloud Development Kit to make a custom CloudFormation resource that helps with compliance. So AWS accounts have lots of knobs. And um, in order to keep track of what's going on, there are some benchmarks. So what I've got pulled up here is AWS Security Hub, and it lists a couple of security standards there. So um, AWS Foundational Security Best Practices, and then the CIS, or Center for Internet Security Foundation's benchmark, version 1.2. And you can see this lab account that I've got running isn't doing so hot, it's at 82% and 28%. So we wanna fix some of those things. Now AWS is cloud in general, is very API driven, that's what makes it cloud. Um, and the security controls, many of them can be configured by API, and so CloudFormation is a great way to do that. But a few of the items are not easily available in CloudFormation. So password policies are one of those things. We'll usually set up a whole fleet of accounts, a separate AWS account for audit, for logging, for dev, for test. And each of those accounts needs to have the password policy set in order to get a good score on this benchmark. Now that's true even if you don't have user accounts in each of those places. Um, the, the config checker is not smart enough to know whether or not you're using any user accounts in, the, in each of those AWS accounts. You just need to have this password policy set. However, there's no way in CloudFormation to set your AWS account password policy. When we say password policy, we're talking about things like this uh, password needs to be a certain length and it needs to have a certain number of unique characters and it can't be reused for a certain number of password changes, all that kind of stuff. Traditional IT security controls. Um, one of those is, is password complexity. So how would we go about doing that? Well. Um, AWS Cloud Development Kit, let me pull up my screen here, has um, a really nice way of creating CloudFormation stacks. But it goes beyond that. So traditionally, CloudFormation is written in YAML, yet another markup language. And then Cloud Development Kit, CDK, lets you use um, a more traditional programming language on top of that in order to describe the stack. So that means you can do really nice things like add comments use loops, um, interact with additional systems, write some additional logic around how you want to generate that CloudFormation stack. The CloudFormation stack is then just going to go and do what you asked for. It's declarative, and it's going to create that set of resources. Now, there is an escape hatch. We mentioned that CloudFormation doesn't have a resource to allow you to manage the account password policy, but CloudFormation does have custom resources. So what is a custom resource? Well, a custom resource is just a way for you to tie into the CloudFormation stack lifecycle, create, update, and delete, and to pass in arbitrary parameters to that resource. What you do inside that resource is totally up to you. You could call out to a third-party API. Maybe you need to update some DNS records in, an, in another system. Or you could call additional AWS APIs. So because there is an API call for updating the account password policy, this is a perfect fit for a custom resource. Now, this sounds like way too much work. Uh, we've got to create a Lambda function, implement the Lambda function to call into this AWS API, deploy that Lambda function, then invoke that Lambda function from a CloudFormation stack in order to pass in the parameters that we want to set on that policy. That sounds like an awful lot of work. However, with CDK, it's not a lot of work. They've got some really nice higher level wrapper code. So I'm going to show you, pull up a project here that I just created, a brand new project. And I created this project. Let me make this a little bigger. I created this project, um, as you can see here, using the command CDK init app. And then I told it the language I want to use is TypeScript. Um, that's really easy to use. You can use other languages, F-sharp, Python, C-sharp, uh, Java, 
whatever your team is most familiar with, you can use those languages from CDK. And so this is um, a, default, a default empty CDK project. It's got a little empty stack for us. And there's some wrapper commands. So we can run npm or yarn uh, run build. We can run CDK deploy. So we can, we can um, actually deploy these changes. So what does that initial stack look like? It's pretty simple. We've got some imports, three imports. Um, this one on line four is really the only one that's doing anything interesting. This is importing from our library directory um, a module called CDK stack. We create the CDK application and we instantiate the CDK stack. So what, is, what does that look like? I'm going to pull up the terminal here. And I can run yarn build. And that's just going to compile the TypeScript. And then I'm going to run yarn CDK ls to just list out what stacks we have available to work with. And so you can see here, we have one stack, CDK stack. So I'm going to change this name just so you can see where the name comes from. And so we're going to call this password policy stack. I'm going to save that and I'm going to run yarn build and yarn CDK LS. And so we're going to recompile that and see now we should have a stack called password policy stack. Now we've called it password policy stack. Really easy. So what's inside that stack? Well, we'll pull up that file. It's currently empty. So these stacks are TypeScript classes uh, we derive from CDK stack. And inside the constructor, we define any of the CDK resources, which are usually one-to-one -one with CloudFormation resources. Um, and those are the resources that go into the stack. So I've pre-written this little snippet. We've got two things. We were importing something from the library. And so we're going to add an import. So this is importing AWS custom resource, AWS custom resource policy, and physical resource ID. These are all imported from the custom resources module in the AWS Cloud Development Kit. That module has these these classes, um, which make it really easy to write a custom resource. So now I've got this implementation of a custom resource that I've written, and I just I'm copying pasting this so you don't have to see me try and type without making mistakes. Um, we're going to put in a single resource, and I'll go through this line by line. So we create the custom resource, we give it a name. The name here is the name of the resource, the logical name of the resource in the generated CloudFormation stack. Pretty simple. We pass in a dictionary of parameters. On update is also called for create. So remember, CloudFormation stacks have three events, create, update, and delete. Update is called anytime the parameters change. Create is obviously called on create, and delete is obviously called on delete. So by providing some details to the update event, that is also going to be reused for the create event. We're going to do the exact same thing. What we want to do in this custom resource is call one API call. And so this wrapper is really, really nice, because if you need to do one API call, it automates so much of it for you. So what service are we going to call? We're going to call the IAM service. And what API are we going to call? We are going to call the API update account password policy. Makes sense. We then get to list out the parameters that we want passed to that API. And so these are all of the parameters for the account password policy. Uh, if we wanted to change these, we can change them. Things like maximum password age, uh, is the expiration hard or soft? Do you require lowercase characters? Whatever your organization's policy is, you can update these to set that policy. And then a little bit of boilerplate, we need a physical resource ID. We're just calling that account password policy. This is where it gets really interesting. So we talked about creating a resource, creating um, 
a Lambda function to implement the custom resource, this policy block, this AWS custom resource policy class, is going to look at this and automatically figure out which permissions the Lambda function needs from the API calls that we've made. So it's going to automatically define the policy to grant just the specific permissions that we need. And we're configuring the amount of log retention that we have. Uh, we're just going to save logs for one week. I want to be able to see that it worked. I don't need to save those logs forever. So now that we've put in this little block of code defining a new AWS custom resource, um, let's see what we get from this stack. Now I've already used AWS Vault, so you can see this pink here, Sandbox Admin SSO. I'm already authenticated into my Sandbox AWS account. I'm going to run yarn build to just compile this code, and I hope it works. And I forgot to import logs. So let's import as logs from AWS CDK, uh, AWS logs. That sounds right. Let's see if that works. I probably forgot to add it to the package JSON. Oh, no, it worked. So now we're going to run yarn cdk diff. And this is going to compare the stack that we have locally with the stack that's been deployed. Check that out. We have these resources. Now, you'll notice there's more resources in here than there is code that we, that we ran. We've got um, our custom resource. This, this is uh, a CloudFormation custom resource. We've got the generated role, the policy that goes with the role, the Lambda that implements that API call logic. We've got a log retention policy, uh, roles and policies for the logs, and the function for the log retention. All of that defined from just this little block of code. It's really, really nice. So when it comes to deploy this, I run yarn. I'm happy with that diff. I want to actually push these changes out. I run yarn CDK deploy. And it's actually going to reach out to AWS and deploy this right into uh, my account. Yes, I'm going to deploy these changes. It's uploading the zip file that contains the implementation of the Lambda function that we just generated, creating the CloudFormation change set. That CloudFormation change set is pointing to the S3 resource, the, the Lambda zip that is in S3 that we just uploaded. And we're getting real-time status updates um, on the stack as it goes through the process of creating it. It'll take just a few seconds to create this. When, once that has been deployed, that API call will have been executed, and it will have updated the password policy in that AWS account. And it tells you exactly what, what's being created here. We can see it's working its way through the, through the uh, dependency list. This is really nice. If we were to come along later on and change one of those policies uh, and then do the diff again, we would see that what the only thing that needs to be changed is the Lambda function. Uh, the policies, uh, the log file settings, none of those things need to be changed. And so using CDK is really, really nice because not only do you get to version control some really nice code that's defining um, what customizations you're making to your account, when you want to diff against what's actually deployed live right now, you get a really, really nice diff. It is almost done. It also makes it easy for testing. So um, I'm deploying into a Sandbox account. Once this is deployed, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn around and delete it. That's also very, very easy. And so as engineers are working on maybe creating some, something custom, before you push it out to all of your accounts, you can easily deploy just a little standalone stack in a test account, go look at the logs, um, interact with it, debug it, until you're confident that it's working the right way. And then you can put it up for review and push it out to the rest of your accounts. These uh, CDK-defined stacks are also perfect for continuous deployment. So most of the places where we work on these, we set them up 
um, in a continuous deployment system. And so when somebody merges a pull request with changes to the stack, those flow out automatically to all of the accounts um, and that infrastructure is just continuously deployed and updated. Our password policy stack was deployed successfully in 141 seconds. So now I'm just gonna turn around and delete it. So instead of calling deploy, I'm gonna call delete and we're gonna clean that example back up. And it's not called delete, what is it called? Destroy, even better than delete. And I used the wrong stack name. Let's see, what was our stack name again? We named this password policy stack. So let's see that destroy. Yeah, I'm sure I'm gonna delete it. Now, when you create and then delete things, one thing that is important to know with CloudFormation generally, not just with CDK, is certain stateful resources are always gonna be left behind as a safety precaution. So we created an S3 bucket and we deployed a Lambda function to that S3 bucket. Now we're deleting the stack, the Lambda function has been deleted, but that zip file over in the S3 bucket has been left behind. So particularly in your dev accounts, as you're creating and destroying and creating and destroying, say you're creating a KMS key, um, a DynamoDB table, uh, an RDS instance, an S3 bucket, every time you create and then delete those stacks, some of those persistent resources will be left behind. And if you need, if you don't go clean them up, you end up paying for a lot more unused resources that are just orphaned, are not connected to any live infrastructure. We've created another tool on the Kindly Ops GitHub called Deleterious. Deleterious will skim through all of your resources and skim through and enumerate all of your CloudFormation stacks, and it will diff them and tell you, these are the set of resources. So you can say, for example, check all my KMS keys. These are the set of KMS keys that are not connected to an active CloudFormation stack. And that can give you a list of candidates for cleanup. You still need to double check that they're not connected to anything, any live data, but particularly in a dev account, uh, using that can save you a lot of money. So that is my demo of using AWS Cloud Development Kit to create a custom resource to implement a password policy so that you can be more in compliance with the Center for Internet Security uh, compliance policies, and you can get a better score in Security Hub. Thanks for watching. Try out Mm-hmm. You'll really like it. And I will see you next time.